This is the time of year that people with the snow and the winter are about getting over it. It is late February and it's cold and we have more snow coming so I thought this would be a good time to do something I've been thinking about for a while and why don't we have some fun. So this is Surly Fest. It was a much loved beer by me and several, you know, a bunch of us in the area that would get it. It was an annual maker. It was a rye lager. It wasn't an Oktoberfest, but they would put it out around this time of year. They would have a party. And basically, it was a fairly hoppy rye lager that was just a yummy beer, but they don't make it anymore. I have, here's one look at a can. Here's another. This is the look I think of when I think of this beer. So, in using the statistics that Surly provided back in the day and that are still available, such as Gravity, Color, SRM, um, IBU, and some of the ingredients, and using some other somewhat kind of insider information that we have uh, procured, this is what I came up with. So, 9.7 pounds Vienna, it calls for about 15% rye, and it called for three kinds of rye. So I have half a pound rye malt, half a pound flaked rye, and then it's this crystal rye that will give it the color of hopefully around SRM 14. Also was said to have some acidulated and melanoidin, and then the hop was pretty clear that it was sterling. So using the IBU, I used a brewer's friend or brewer's friend Calcular, calcular, calculator, uh, online tool, and got these amounts of grain. This hop addition schedule. Um, they did specify what yeast they used, but I happen to have some yeast on hand that uh, is a lager yeast, like they use. So I'm not thinking that the lager strains make as much of a difference as some of your ale strains when you're using those. Um, so anyway. Hoping for 1060 at least, maybe in the, a little over, would be nice. And if it all goes well, in a little while, we'll have something fun to try. And we will not be able to do a side-by-side, -side, but uh, many of us kind of have an idea of what that beer was like, so we can kind of just go from memory. And the brew day is underway. I've got the mash going. I've got... My sterling hops right here and the sea starter is going. Now this is the same yeast that I had a little trouble with if you've seen the previous Hoppy Hellas video but I did end up fermenting and I also did as you saw pitch that dried lager yeast so I went ahead and harvested it anyway. Hopefully it will go better this time because I'm gonna not have it below the temperature range like you saw in that other video I think I just had it too cold especially at the start when it's just trying to kind of get going so I'm gonna watch the temperature probably have it warmer at first um, and then if it gets going I'll bring it into the recommended temperature range and see how it goes just thought I'd do a shot of the color of the first runnings and that's sort of this right now a reddish brown type color and I guess that is pretty much kind of how I remember it. In fact, I'm trying to think if one of these pitchers had it in a glass. Yeah. So, you know, it's always different. You got the second runnings will be lighter and then it will ferment, but, um, you know, hopefully it will be close. It has been an hour and I am going to do just a five minute hop stand. The reason that that is the case is I ran the, uh, calculations and shut this fan off um, if I did it longer than the IBUs the target IBUs go up um, you know even more which makes sense but if I do it five minutes 
it gives it a little boost in IBUs and of course anyone watching these videos knows that I'm a fan of this hop stand type process so let me look at the clock okay so I'm gonna give it about five minutes and then we'll cool it down and do the rest so here is the hydrometer sample after it's been chilled I like the color it will probably be close to 1060 from initial viewing but I will get a definitive original gravity later here's my yeast starter it is a little bit more milky white than the one for the Hoppy Hellas, which was slower to start. And uh, I'm just going to, like I said, not keep it as cool, I don't know if I said that or not, um, as the Hoppy Hellas, which was slow to start because it was below the recommended temperature range. So I'm going to, you know, keep it warmer in the range and hopefully this will start faster if not i will be forced to go find some extra yeast and pitch it but uh yeah i'm gonna aerate it get it all buttoned up and hopefully it will start soon so the beer is fermenting it didn't really get going until about 48 hours after pitching which is longer than i like even for loggers i'm not gonna peel back the shirts but there is a couple inch croissant it is fermenting i took a reading it's friday i brewed it on monday didn't really get going actively or really strongly until wednesday it's 10 38 now and it's at the lower end of the temperature range it's about 52 fahrenheit this contraption, which is also a uh, beautiful, you know, fireplace, haha, -ha, also has a little heater. And it does throw out a, a little heat. So I put it on one or just over. What I think I'm going to do, I have a piece of cardboard under here, I have two chairs. And I figured out I can probably duct tape this blanket up, you know, across here and make a little hot box. So what I'm going to do is run this and check the temperature. Now, I don't want it to get overly warm, of course, but if I can get it to mid 50s or so, um, which I think I should be able to after having this heater on, it might uh, perk up even more. So here's my little contraption. Here's my little brother. He made this goofy blanket for uh, us, last, all of us last Christmas with uh, real handsome pictures of himself. Uh, pretty funny. So yeah, here's my little quick little box, warm area. And uh, I'll have to remember to check it in a few hours and see if the temperature is going up at all. Oh, no, this don't matter. All right, actually, I wish we had one. Had one what? A real survey fest. Gosh, do you think there's one sitting around somewhere? I hope not. Charlie P. What's up? All right, there's the surly fest. It is nice and clear. Go ahead and start, Don. Yeah, it got down to 1016 from 1060, and we were just doing some quick calcs, and that comes in about 5.8% alcohol, and the original, I think, was 6. So it's close. It's not quite uh, exactly there, and um, it's nice and clear. It probably did gelatin. I don't remember. Um, I think I probably would have thinking that it would be like not dark enough that you couldn't see through it and that you mm -hmm. it would be nice to, to be clear. Um, I've run it by a couple people that were familiar with the original Surly Fest as Chip also rested soul. Yeah, right. Uh, had it. And so we all kind of have a consensus of what we think. And uh, what is that, Chip? What do um, we all think? What we just Tell discussed us. before we started rolling, 
I'm gonna take Charlie's collar off. Um, there's something that lingers a little sweet-ish in the aftertaste, and we kind of we we went and looked at the numbers. We think maybe if you could get that final gravity down more to like 10, 10, 10, 12. But we also said, and it's funny because Sterling isn't this hop that just makes you think like I'm hops, but like yeah, the fact that it's not traditionally um, dry hop that's a hop stand right we feel like we're we <laughs> the jury yeah feel like we're missing a little bit of that like kind of like hop that used to sit on the nose it definitely carried the maltiness through but granted everything from the eye mm -hmm. to the malt flavor that is so very very close like you remember yeah. you used to have this kind of roasted spice malt kind of foundation I felt like the original beer, when you would, that was, well, they've always had cans, cans, but yeah. like The blue and white can, Yeah, the red cans, awesome. and you'd crack a can and pour it into a glass, and it would just hit you in the face, yeah. just with the aroma. And then you kind of, you, you know, you taste with your nose, too. So you're drinking this, you're smelling the hops, you're drinking it, you're tasting the hops. It was, um, it was hoppier. I've not been a fan of dry hopping for a while. However, this would have been a case where um, I think that would have been interesting to, to dose it up with some, with two plus ounces of hops before yeah. packaging and then um, You've and always then been kind of, or at least recently, Mr. Hop Stand, but maybe even some of the fermentation. Yeah. Like I don't dry hop, dry hop, but I would put, I would have put those hops in at like, day two or three and just let them be in there during the last 30 yeah. percent of fermentation that what this is that's though, a, is a good like rye toberfest I would yeah say. it's not unbitter there's a decent amount of bitterness but then again the uh base mold is 9.7 pounds of vienna which mm -hmm. is going to give you a little more of a sweet character than mm -hmm. uh like a pills or a pale but yeah, there's two pounds of rye, and um, I think you do get a little, you know, as they say, spicy, and a little, as you're gonna say, quoi, uh, from the rye. Oh, I forgot there's three kinds of rye in there. Mm -hmm. It's almost like Frostline rye. Which is sort of like. It is, I know, as I said it out loud, I was like, well, wait a minute, because I've had a lot of that this winter. I thought that that That's... beer was kind of like surly fast. I mean, oh, when I like had it. Definitely more hot, because it's more. Americanized hops, whereas mm -hmm. I don't even know where Sterling comes from, but I know it's not your most like in your face hop. But because they used so much of it in a beer that you're not used to kind of thinking as being hoppy, yeah, that was kind of the joy of Sterling Fest. It was like, oh, there's something very bold about this beer. And it's probably both the rye, the hops, three kinds of a, rye. That must have been a Todd beer. Oh, for sure. Must have. That was OG. Come up with that, yeah. OG seasonal. No, that was a. I mean, I like. I should have broke out my Surly Fest Stein that I have for this tasting. I actually. like. Uh, I like a rye in a beer, and I like a rye hoppy beer. Uh, there's uh, Denny Khan has his well-known rye IPA that I've made a couple times, and that's that, a rye smile. That uh, it's just called rye IPA. But mm. Anyway, I it's a uh, yeah nice combination, and I think I could see doing this again at some point, and just. Probably going for it a little bit more assertively with the, with the trying to dose it up with the hops. I mean, I, I wonder if even... a little bit more acidulated would even help. There's just something not balancing the malt sweetness. I think it, but wouldn't this was take... a pretty vouched for recipe. We won't, yeah, we won't give away our sources, but well, multiple people who have gone through the ranks of Surly kind of gave us some winks and nods. Mm -hmm. No, and I. Or did, did you say in the setup that you did uh, figure this out I, on your own? I alluded to getting some <laughs> tips or whatever. I mean, you can. I looked at their product you page. You can and go I look up. Reverse the, engineered it. They put stuff on the can, or you know, you can look up or on the web page what, what was in it. But then we got a little bit more help. But no, I, I mean, you know, it's a, it's a nice drinking beer. It's not difficult to drink, and it's. Uh, <laughs> Has, yeah, I mean, I don't She's know. easy to look it's, at. It's kind of fun. I yeah. would also say, and I know that you don't mess around much 
with this, like I don't, but like water chemistry in a beer like this might actually be something to consider. True. True. But whatever. To uh, leave that to Paul Fowler. Accentuate the hops, you mean? I think so, yeah. What hops there are right. in there. I sort of. Because uh, you would usually throw this into like a multi beer category, but maybe you would actually do whatever. No, you can would add, make hops pop, right? Yes, you can add things to do that. I don't do that, but one can and uh, gypsum. I'm not even gonna guess. I think that is actually oh, what hey. I was gonna say. Look at us making stuff <laughs> I, up. I don't think I have any. <laughs> I've never <laughs> used it. Let's, but uh, let's go bust up some drywall. No, it's not. Anyway, uh, off the rails. But yeah, this was a fun experiment and nailed it. Half nailed it? You, what, how many nails would you give this if like four is a true that. nail? I'd give it a two nails. <laughs> Half nailed it. There you go. But We're not undrinkable is the point. Yeah. Awesome. No. That's always pleasant when you experiment and just do make up a recipe. You just hope that it's something that you can drink. And uh, I can drink this. So. so yes, thanks for watching. Coming along with the experiments. Um, yeah. Comment away if you like using the different ryes. I don't think I've ever used three kinds of rye in one beer, so that was kind of fun. And uh, it's yummy. So there you go. Catch you later. Smash that like and subscribe.